so today we are going to discuss the inverse of a matrix so the formula for inverse of a matrix is a inverse is equal to 1 by determinant a times adjoint a so this denominator out here is the determinant of matrix a now adjoint a is the transpose of a cofactor matrix of a now what is a cofactor matrix a cofactor matrix is a matrix which contain the minor of each element a i j where i indicates the row and j indicates the column in which the element is present all right now uh, we shall also take into consideration its positional sign so in case of minor we just uh, uh, we just delete the row of a given element and the column of a given element and we drive a minor however in the case of a cofactor all right we need to make sure that we consider its positional sign I shall discuss this in detail let us see what are the conditions for the existence of an inverse of a matrix now there are two conditions if a is a given matrix then matrix a should be a square matrix the second condition is that the determinant of matrix A should not be equal to 0 which implies that it should be a non-singular matrix. Now we, the first condition all right, uh, it says that it should be a square matrix so I hope you remember what is a square matrix. A square matrix is a matrix where the number of rows is equal to the number of columns. Now let us proceed and let us see what are the step involved in finding the inverse of a matrix. The first step is to find the determinant of matrix A. So remember if the determinant is equal to 0 then it's not possible to find the inverse. The inverse is not defined. We can only proceed if the determinant of matrix A is not equal to 0. That is as I've mentioned earlier it should be a non-singular matrix. The second step is that we need to find the cofactors of all elements of A and arrange them as a matrix. The third step, we need to take the transpose of a cofactor matrix to get a joint A. What is transpose of cofactor matrix? If we take the transpose of any given matrix, then we, we interchange the rows into columns you shall see this later the next step is that we need to divide a join a that is a join matrix of a by the determinant of a so the result will be the desired a inverse now here's again the formula a inverse is equal to 1 by determinant a a join a So let us see how the positional sign of an element is determined. So out here I am taking a square matrix of 3 by 3 order. So A is equal to Aij where I 
it's the number 4 is equal to 3 and now j is the number of column this is also equal to 3 so the first element a11 shows that it is uh, present in the first row and first column if you look at this element this shows that it is present in the first row and third column suppose if you look at this element then it implies that it is present in the third row and first column similarly if you look at this particular element we see that it is present in the third row and third column now how do we determine the, the positional sign of each element now i is the row where the where the uh, element is present and j is the column where the element is present so if the sum of i plus j is equal to an even number then the positional sign of the element will be positive however if the sum of i plus j is equal to an odd number then the positional sign of the element will be minus let us take an example of a11 so a11 this particular element is present the first row and first column so 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 so it is an even number so the positional sign of a11 is positive that is how we get positive out here next let us take an example of a23 so a23 this particular element is present in the second row and third column the sum of 2 plus 3 the sum of 2 and 3 is equal to 5 5 is an odd number therefore the positional sign of a to 3 is minus so that is how we get minus out here so in similar way the positional sign of all other elements are determined